Hi, I'm professional house planner Jack Thomason. Today I'm going to show you how to install Shaw's engineered hardwood flooring. Engineered hardwoods can be installed using the floating, glue down, and nail or staple methods. In this video, I'll be showing you the floating method, which is a good choice for DIY projects. Floating means that the planks are locked or glued together, but not attached to the wall or to the subfloor. So let's get started. Before beginning the installation process, be sure to read all manufacturer's instructions carefully. Some of the most important things you can do to ensure a successful flooring installation take place before you install the first plank. For any hardwood installation, it's important to place the hardwood in the room where you'll install it for at least 48 hours so the planks can acclimate to the home's temperature and humidity levels. Why? Your flooring will expand and contract. That's natural. But if it doesn't acclimate to the room, the expansion and contraction could be so severe that it could buckle the entire floor. You'll need to maintain a temperature between 65 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit and a relative humidity of 35 to 55 percent for a minimum of five days prior to the delivery of the floor, as well as during and after installation. When the flooring arrives, open the ends of the cartons and leave them stacked no more than three cartons high in the room where the flooring will be installed. Another important part of your prep work is moisture testing. Moisture under your floor can be its worst enemy. Now you can buy an expensive tool to test this, or you can easily test your concrete subfloor for moisture by taping a trash bag to the floor all along four sides, creating a seal. After 48 hours, you can check to see if any moisture was captured by the trash bag. If you do think moisture might be a problem, it will be necessary to use a more advanced test. Follow the link below to learn more. Then you'll want to make sure your subfloor is clean, flat, dry, and level within one eighth of an inch in any six foot section. If any spots exceed one eighth of an inch, fill them in with a cement leveling compound. If you're floating floors over concrete subfloors, you'll need to use a six mil polyethylene sheeting as a moisture barrier. To do this, unroll the material overlapping edges four inches and seal seams with a clear plastic tape. Allow the poly plastic to run two inches up the wall. You'll trim it after installation is complete. If you're installing over vinyl, wood, or a wood product subfloor, you don't need the polyethylene, but some homeowners enjoy the sound quality that using an underlayment can provide. Today, we're using Shaw's Silent Step 3-in-1 underlayment, which provides a moisture barrier, comfort, and sound improvement. Be sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions for the specific type of underlayment you're using and be sure to check the written instructions for more details about insulation over existing floors. You will need to remove cord around and undercut door frames to provide necessary clearance for your new engineered hardwood flooring. The materials and tools you'll need to install your engineered hardwood, a tape measure, painter's tape, hammer, moisture meter, hand saw, electric miter saw, table saw, pry bar, safety glasses, color wood filler, dust mask, Shaw tongue and groove adhesive, terry cloth towels, tapping block, half inch spacers, and a minimum of six mil polyethylene sheeting for concrete subfloors or another type of underlayment if desired. Transitions and moldings. Once you've taken care of the subfloor, it's time to move on to planning your installation. You'll want to pull planks from multiple boxes to achieve an even color variety across the floor. First, you need to decide which direction to run the planks. Ideally, you should install the boards perpendicular to the direction of your floor joists. Once you know the direction, you'll decide your starting wall. Some homeowners find it easiest to run planks parallel to an exterior wall because they are often straighter than interior walls. Now it's time to begin laying out the flooring, also called racking the floor. Use random length planks from several different cartons. You'll want each row to use a variety of links to avoid a patterned appearance. Make sure the groove side of each plank faces your starting wall. It's important to stand back and examine the board arrangement in good light to make sure your layout has the look you want before you begin installation. Remember, you want to make sure you like the layout before you start gluing. Now what I'm about to tell you may be the most confusing part of an installation. We're going to determine the size of our first and last rows. Why? Because the room will look more beautiful if the first and last rows are equal size. The sign of a new installer is a first row that's six inches wide and a last row that's three. 
Before you start your first row, measure the room. Divide by the width of the flooring planks you're installing. How many planks will it hold? Half of what remains will be the size of the first row, and the other half will be the size of the last. When cutting the first row and removing part of the width, you want to keep the side with the tongue. When cutting the last row, keep the groove side. Keep in mind though that no row should ever be less than two inches wide. Now that you've established the layout and figured the width of your first and last rows, we're going to fit the first two rows together without gluing. Start with the first plank in the right corner and connect the second plank at the end joint. Continue this process until you reach the end of the first row. You will probably need to cut the final plank to fit. Now here's something you need to understand before you make your first cut, expansion space. You will need to maintain an expansion space of a half inch around the perimeter of the entire room, including walls, cabinets, and other obstacles. You can use spacers to help maintain consistent expansion space. Why is this necessary? Wood is a natural product and it will expand and contract slightly with changes in temperature and humidity. The expansion space will give your floor room to expand and contract. Please note that larger rooms require additional expansion space. Add 1 16th of an inch to the width of the expansion space for every 3 feet the room extends beyond 25 feet. So at this point you have your first row in place. Now you'll add the second row plank by plank, again from right to left. Connect the planks using the tongue of the first row and the groove of the second row. Cut the length of the last plank as needed. Step back and have a look. All end joints should be separated by a minimum of 16 inches in your first four rows to create greater stability in these foundational rows. Check and make sure the end joints in these first two rows are staggered appropriately. If it looks good, then you're ready to start gluing. Now gently disengage the planks you've laid in the first two rows so you can begin gluing. Working from the right corner, take the second plank of the first row and apply a continuous bead of adhesive down the groove of the end joint that faces the first plank. Lock the end joints of these two planks together where you have placed the glue. Continue doing the same down the entire first row. For the second row, go back to the right side of the room. Take the first board of the second row and run a continuous bead of adhesive along the groove of the long side that's facing the first row. Lock its long groove into the first row. Then take the second plank of the second row, apply a bead of adhesive down the groove of both the end joint and the long side, and connect it to the first plank of the second row and to the first row. You'll continue this same process down the entire second row. Proper alignment is critical. Misaligned starter rows can cause side and end gaps to appear in later rows of flooring. So keep an eye on your rows as you work to make sure nothing shifts out of place. Use a tapping block if necessary to close the boards together. Immediately wipe away any excess adhesive with a clean, slightly dampened cloth. Place strips of painter's tape across seams to secure the boards while the tongue and groove adhesive sets. After the second row, move on to the third and fourth rows, staggering the end joints a minimum of 16 inches. As you start the fifth row, and for all later rows, you can stagger the end joints a minimum of 8 inches. Continue to install the floor working right to left, repeating the process until the floor is complete. Continue to use spacers on all vertical surfaces to maintain the expansion space. The last row will most likely require cutting to width as you planned before you started installing the planks. To make the cut to the exact measurement, lay the plank face up on top of the last row installed. Make sure you're measuring the plank with the tongue facing the end wall. Trace the wall contour of the last plank using a scrap piece of plank and a pencil. This is the mark for your cut. Install cut planks and pull into place with a pry bar then place spacing wedges between planks and wall. Allow the floor to dry for a minimum of 24 hours before removing all spacing wedges, removing the painter's tape over the seams, and permitting foot traffic. The next day, once the adhesive has fully set, you can install the trim and moldings, which are key to a beautifully finished floor. Quarter round covers the expansion gap around the perimeter of the room and gives the room a polished look. In doorways less than six feet wide, you'll need a transition piece. Use a T-molding if connecting to a floor of the same height, or a reducer if connecting to a floor of a different height. 
these pieces create a safe and attractive transition. If you're installing the hardwood floors on stairs or at a step down, you'll need a stair nose. There are flush stair nose and overlap stair nose options. The flush stair nose is used for nail, staple, or glue down installations, while the overlap stair nose is used for floating floors. Be sure to sweep or vacuum without using the beater bar and clean the floor with a proper wood floor cleaner. You don't want to use oil-based products on your hardwood floor because it can cause a buildup on the hardwood that dulls the appearance. Store any unused materials in a dry place in case repairs are needed in the future. And remember, always use plywood or hardboard as protection when moving heavy appliances or furniture across your new floor. Then it will be time to relax and enjoy your beautiful new engineered hardwoods from Shaw Floors.